Alright guys, Hatch Comic again today. Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. The next stage of Ostermania, it appears, is honest with rumours emerging last night that the Los Angeles Super Team is done after theories over the last few days that maybe gentle mates were going to come in and sabotage this whole thing. Would Cloud9 actually sell Hydra despite rumours that yes, Hydra does want to leave that team? Apparently, the job is done at the dealer's seals and Nature and the Los Angeles Thieves have put together one of the craziest teams in the last 10 years of off-season Rostermania. If this comes true, what does it mean for the other rosters, especially Toronto themselves? New rumours emerging on what their team is going to be looking like for next year. Very much enjoyed to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you are new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Plenty to go to today. Firstly from Phoenix of course. Former Seattle Surge coach a couple of years ago. Kind of coach general manager. Then was on Vegas alongside Theory last year. Obviously that's no longer the case right with Vegas Falcons now as it is bringing on their boys and even rumours that maybe Dreal is looking for opportunities. It's just pretty difficult because we know that teams are cutting Cost. We know that Optic, for example, well, at least it's rumoured that Optic are requesting their players take salary cuts. We know that FaZe are getting rid of Tupac Thuglord, their search and destroy coach. So um, some teams that have had two to three coaches over the last few years, that's possibly no longer going to be the case, right? Because if they're cutting costs, they're asking the players to take pay cuts, they're getting rid of coaches. It's unlikely that many teams are going to have more than like one coach in the league going forwards. So it just makes things pretty tricky, right? Because FaZe and Toronto and even Optic Optic and other teams have had at least a couple of guys in the coaching staff over the last few years. FaZe, Toronto, New York probably especially, but you know, Cloud9, Dereal is gone, Sender was potentially rumoured to be following Hydra to Thieves, we'll get into that over the coming minutes, so it's tricky for the likes of Phoenix because they might go back to being only like 12 spots over the last couple of years, there's been more like 18, 20 coaching spots because some teams love one, some teams love two, maybe more, now that may no longer be the case, teams are coming cost, you guys know how it is, so as Phoenix says, free agent coach potentially for challenges for the upcoming season, so Wishing him the best. Hope it works out. Great guy. Yesterday we saw that Beans has signed a contract reportedly, of course, with Toronto Ultra. We shall see if that comes true over the coming days, I imagine, when they all lock things in. I also do wonder what these teams are going to do in terms of confirmations, right? Because there's lots of rumours flying around at the moment. The assumption might be they may just confirm the roster, you know, with a picture, a short video, and then do like a proper announcement video when the players get out there, right? Because to do an announcement video for the Thieves roster, for example, or for the you know Toronto roster you've got to have the roster then you've got to have the players out there make a bit of content you guys know how it goes so I wonder if you know some of the teams might preempt that and just say hey here's a picture of our players like this is how it's going to be or maybe they will wait a little bit longer we'll see what they decide to do but that's kind of the bean side this was the other rumor that was going around on exactly how that all fit in with Surge because the other day I think it was Scrappy on stream said, hey, what about if Hixie was to go to Toronto? Wouldn't that make sense? And that's when Methods was then like, hey, aren't you on Toronto type thing? So we talked about that clip. So there were some rumours that actually, yeah, Toronto were thinking about bringing Hixie back. Now that seems less likely, but potentially there's some interesting factors still in play here with Toronto in terms of the players they're trying to look for. Because as Jake Hal says yesterday, Hixie may no longer be available for Surge. So, you know, they're bringing in Nasty instead of Brizzy, effectively on Surge. And the other rumour was that they were getting rid of who can bring in potentially Hixie in. But the rumour is that no, Hixie is potentially considering or at least Ultra are considering an option over there. I imagine as Jake Hell says if he gets a contract off of Ultra then he'll be taking it. This is the other one though if not Hixie then Real is the alternative option for Ultra. Kremp has been linked with Surge as well should the Hixie deal fail. So um, it's a very interesting situation right now. There's a few players in flux really where they might potentially end up. Of course the big rumour remains Hixie potentially to Surge but if Toronto are interested then Hixie is a free agent right they can get him for free and um, this is kind of what Ben says no matter what sounds like you're getting a gritty EU team EU world champions 2025 which does seem true right I mean either Surge are going to have pretty much a fully European roster apart from 04 or it's now going to be the case still on Toronto right many of you guys have asked me over the last few years what's my favorite team I don't really have one nowadays back in the day I did ever since I've started making content over the last few years I kind of care more about the drama that I do about whether a certain team wins or loses to 
be honest. But um, I've always generally supported the European players. So people have asked me what my favourite team is. Over the last few years, I've generally said Toronto, probably. So, um, and I like Scrappy as well, and Envoy. So, you know, I think probably if I had to say I support one team, I'd like the Toronto guys to do well in general. And I think it's a great organisation, great people behind the scenes. They run great events, all that good stuff. So, you know, it seems like this year it might be even more European-based, right? Because rumour has it they're bringing Beans in, and then maybe Hixie as well. Or, regardless, potentially Real. And that's the other big question as of yesterday, is whether actually Toronto are targeting to get Real off of the Miami Heretics. And this is really interesting. These were their World Cup cards. Real was their best performer by a mile. Over the course of the season, he was also probably the best performer by some margin. He was a bit up and down, but um, I think overall, Real had a pretty damn good year. He started the year on Ravens, let's not forget, with God RX. Then, oh, visa problems because it's Ravens. So they got rid of him, basically. They brought TJ in, and that seemed to be a good decision. But Real eventually gets the opportunity on Miami. They get the visa sorted finally over there. There. and um, you know, the rest is history did a great job helped Miami become the team that they were towards the end of the year and to be fair they were shockingly abysmal at the World Cup but um, you know over the course of the regular season they were okay they of course qualified in the end for the World Championship this is a player name that I didn't really talk about yesterday right we talked about if you're Toronto let's say you bring back Insight you bring back Kleenex you keep them on their current deals or you basically lower their salaries and they can't have a better offer so they're going to stay you bring Beans in that's a good acquisition to me. But you're going to need an SMG that has the potential to slay. And there's not many out there, right? We talked about Gwyn being maybe the ideal candidate of Ravens, but are you going to be able to get him? Maybe not. He's their star player, probably going to hold him to a potentially high degree of buyout. So, um, you know, that's an, a possibility there, but unlikely maybe. We talked about maybe TJ and like Nero and maybe even like Capsule and some of these other options, but no one really that's maybe proven to be like a good slaying option that Toronto could have to round out their roster. So now they're looking at Real and a player that I didn't really consider to be on the radar just because, yeah, he's clearly talented and he speaks good English as well, which is valuable, but he's, you know, on the Miami team and he was basically their best player. And I thought, yeah, he's probably going to stay. But to be fair to Miami, they're bringing in Renko, right? They've signed that player into their roster. And I feel like if they do sign Renko and get rid of Real, their team is very AI heavy, which I think could be a serious problem problem and even the other best Spanish player you could sign is basically Super who's also an AR so that I think is the risk for Miami if they were to let Real go they are effectively giving up a lot of their SMG talent and I think that would probably be a mistake to be honest but they have five players right now Miami they've signed Rencor the rumor was they were going to get rid of Vickel for him but um they're probably not getting a buyout for Vickel so if you're Miami and someone's saying look we're going to pay you a buyout for Real we're going to use some of this scrap and envoy money to buy Real off the team you might say you know what let's give it a go we've still got our Spanish roster wishing the best of luck to Real going forwards but um yeah that's the rumor and even as Ronnie he says they want a fully new roster apparently that's what ultra apparently are looking for here and um also it's maybe worthy of note that ultra as kind of part of overactive media they also own movistar koi i think that's right and they're spanish right so the idea of having a spanish player on the cod team too it does kind of add up on some level but also you've got to pay a buyout for real whereas you wouldn't for hixie or for even someone like bantz right i mean you know bantz was sitting down doing some content with those guys a while ago there was a room that he's going to be back on the organization in some form or another so i don't know if that's true or not but yeah apparently they want a full european roster so it's either going to be real if they want to pay a buyout and if miami agree to it but then again if you're ultra you've literally just come out publicly and said we don't have all the money in the world we're trying to be a little bit careful so the idea of then paying a buyout for a player i don't know maybe it makes sense though because would i take real over bantz or higgsy i think i would so let's be real so um you know in terms of what they need on that roster that is the development there over at the los angeles thieves and then there was a further update and said that yeah real is actually the number one option so he's the player they're targeting if they can come to an agreement with miami and miami may well look to agree exactly that and octane says w decision Making. So it's interesting how Real would fit into that roster. To be fair, I think Hixie and Bantz, you can be pretty confident the chemistry is going to be really damn good on that roster. Whether, you know, whether the talents can make up for it, these are some other debates that are worthy of having. I think, honestly, I like the idea. I'm just not super convinced, but I do think Toronto, again, they are going to find a way to build a team, even without Scrappy and Envoy 
that is going to be reasonably competitive. Like they always find a way to do it. So, um, and I think that's probably likely to continue. The other though, big story of yesterday comes out of Ronnie as well on the CDL Scumintel account saying that this is now basically a done deal. We've heard the rumors over the last few days, especially when it was rumored that Cloud9 were getting very close to signing Scrappy. Then, um, and even not long ago, it was Adam Adamu who denied that the deal with Scrappy going to Cloud9 was getting closer. I don't think Ronnie tweeted it or something and he said Cloud9 securing Scrap is getting closer and um, Adam Adamu from Toronto said like this is not true and at the time we speculated okay is he just saying that for negotiating power in various discussions which may still be true but as it turned out he was right that um, no they weren't talking with Cloud9 that much they were talking more seriously with the Los Angeles Thieves so this was rumoured now you know 10, 12, 14 or so days ago that this was the roster that Thieves were trying to build and it would be the craziest acquisition of players in the last probably 10 years. I mean, pretty much since Optic managed to sign Krim and Formal and Karma and everyone in that one-off season going into the Advanced Warfare year, this is the craziest thing that's happened probably since then in many respects. Arguably, Scrap and Hydra 1A, 1B in the entire game on their respective roles. The idea to put them together on the same team, you know, we didn't really think it was possible this offseason. We didn't think Toronto would be able to pull it off. We didn't think Cloud9 would be able to pull it off. Seemingly, it's taken Nature and the Thieves to pull it off. So the other day, we heard the rumours yesterday that the Scrap and Envoy deal is done. Deal agreed. Negotiations concluded. They will be leaving Toronto and going, in Envoy's case, back to the Los Angeles Thieves. Ghosty was obviously always going to stay, but um, yeah, it's just absolutely perfectly executed, if true this, from the Los Angeles Thieves. But Hydra, of course, was the big question. Could they get him? Could they not? Do they have the money to actually facilitate this? But as we saw the other day, Jack Etienne was definitely implying from Cloud9 that Hydra effectively wants to leave. And if he wants to leave, Cloud9 will, on some level, be forced to facilitate that. Los Angeles Thieves, if they're paying the money for Scrap and Envoy, then, you know, what's the extra couple of hundred grand to pay Hydra's buyout as well? And obviously, if you are Scrap, if you are Hydra, then it's pretty likely that if your organization was to lock you down for another year, you're going to leave for free on the next off season anyway. So, you know, it's pretty ideal. If this, of course, does turn out to be true, because apparently this is basically a done deal. Of course, remember when Ronnie said a couple of years ago that Hydra to Optic was 95% done, which it was, and then Skump decided to change his mind and then run back the roster so Hydra never joined Optic. So, um, you know, this is a here we go moment. Basically, he's saying it's a done deal. And yeah, Optic, FaZe, Los Angeles, Thieves, those are no doubt in my mind going to have to be your big three going into the next season. How does it compete? I guess that is is the question right because Hydra and Envoy as your SMG duo I mean how does that compare to Pred Shotzi how does that compare to Simper Beezy? I mean in my eyes it should be absolutely right up there I mean on paper Hydra Envoy is Hydra Kisma but a bit better in my opinion with Envoy being I think a bit of a better role player and slightly more consistent than Kismet's able to be and then Scrap Ghosty is I mean wow you're comparing that to Cell Draz pretty damn similar. You're comparing that to Dashi Kenny, pretty damn similar, I would say, personally. So, yeah, it's a mega team. It is probably the best team that they could possibly have formed. And um, it's actually incredible to think that I'm sure there's going to be lots of uh, Thieves flares on the Reddit popping back up again because it was a big rebuild year for Thieves, but actually still quite a successful one at that. And now here they are. Now, um, you know, people I think are just joking around here about the fact that they've got their flight getting tracked here from Toronto over to Los Angeles. But also that is another question whether those guys will play out of Los Angeles or whether they might, you know, have a facility down there in Texas where Nature has now moves. Of course, Thieves aren't going to have unlimited money are they of especially after paying all this money to get those guys so online if they are playing out of la we know that that is an internet disadvantage that is maybe something to consider here but um yes yeah, phase tweet out yesterday optic phase thieves those are gonna be your big three it seems going into next year so we're expecting confirmations over the coming days and weeks massively intrigued to your thoughts on all of this stuff in the comment section below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new take care and i'll see you next time